color is one of the things that draws us to food photography. So I want to share in this video seven tips that you can use for color when you're composing your food stories. Hey there, I'm Rachel Karnick, professional food photographer, helping you take incredible photos of food that are good enough to eat. This is the third video in a three-part series on color theory for food photography. So if you haven't checked out my other videos on basic and advanced color theory, make sure to check out those links below. Now that we've learned six color theories, I want us to dive deeper into color so we can really make our food story sing. The first tip is to think about colors in terms of being warm and cool. So when we look at a color wheel, we could think about colors as being split up into two. So we could have cool colors on one side, warm colors on the other. But color theory goes deeper than that. You can have a green that feels warm or a green that feels cool. And that is going to change how your story feels. So think about what you're trying to tell the viewer. Is the food comfort food or is it crisp and cool? Do you want to match cool colors with a feeling of freshness? Or do you want to have that cozy feeling that is going to lend itself to like a warm orange? So not only do you have to choose cool and warm colors, but you can change that in editing. So you can take whatever color you want and you could make it a cool feeling purple or a warm feeling purple. And that's going to change how the color feels. So really lean into how the color is making you feel and don't forget to play with warm and cool tones. The second tip is to use color contrast. On a basic level, we can do something very simple like use complementary colors, which are opposite on the color wheel. Now I want you to think a little bit deeper and think about contrast itself. So contrast is when we have like a dark tone and a light tone. And can you use that within color theory to pair a dark color and a light color together? to further enhance the contrast in your photos. Number three is to think about saturated and desaturated colors. So this is something that took me a while because when it came to color, I thought that rich, saturated colors were what was gonna make an impact. But after a while, I realized that desaturating some colors can also be just as powerful and beautiful. So at the editing stage, you can play around with a different saturation of different colors and see how it makes you feel. Within monochromatic color theory as well, you might want to take a particular color and think about using desaturated tones within that color to further boost your composition. Number four is to match colors in props and backgrounds. This is something that B. Lubas does all the time, and I love that in her work. So one thing I love to do is match props and backgrounds. So then the food itself is going to stand out in a different way. So when I put these things together, I like to pair lighting with the color of the background and the props so they just feel seamless. So they feel like one thing that's like fading into the background and then the food is going to pop off the subject. Now, it can be tough when you're starting out to have props and backgrounds that match together, but it's something to think about as you build your collection because it's a beautiful composition technique. Number five is to think about color repetition. So how can we repeat the colors that you've chosen within your color theory throughout the image. So let's think of a raspberry cake. We might have the raspberries within the cake, on top of the cake, there could be raspberry jam, we might have raspberries scattered across the scene. So not only is this interesting from a visual perspective, but here we are using color repetition within that subject throughout the frame. And just to bounce off that idea, when it comes to editing and color grading, color repetition is going to really help you decide which colors to use when you're going to grade and tone a photo. One technique that I like to do, which is tip six, is to really pare down color theory to the food itself. So I like minimalist composition, and I really like to focus on the details in food. So can you think about color theory just at the food stage? So let's say we've got a noodle bowl. We're thinking about the colors that we're using within that. Or maybe you're doing a show-stopping cocktail. Can we use colors within that cocktail so that if you just put that cocktail on its own on a black background, it would be still very interesting. So I really like to pare down my color theory to just focus on the food. And the last tip, tip number seven, is to just get inspired by colors that you see around you. From colors in nature, there are color pairings everywhere. And a lot of them follow a lot of color theory. 
So next time you're out and about, whether it's in the wilderness or around the streets or in your garden, take a look at the colors around you. And can you name the color pairings to the color theory? And can you think about how you can use that in your work? So I went on a trip in British Columbia and I was just blown away by the different tones of blue that they had. And that really allowed me to use those colors in a photo shoot in this blueberry pie here. So never underestimate the colors around you because they are one of our best teachers. This three-part series was brought to you by my Composition Essentials Masterclass, which is everything you need to know to style, compose, and photograph your unique food stories. So if you're ready to take your composition up a notch, make sure to head to compositionessentials.com to check out if my masterclass is right for you. So I've shared a lot of tips in this three-part series. I want you to take away one thing. The simplest thing, the thing that I love to do the most, is just to pair two colors and do it powerfully. So think about which color theory does that the best for you. Then you could think about warm and cool colors together. Think about desaturated and saturated colors, and maybe even just pairing it down to the food itself. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be really simple. And if you just lean into how the colors make you feel, you definitely can't go wrong. We could create 10 videos on color. It is such an interesting topic and I only shared seven tips. So what did I miss? Is there something that you do all the time that you would love to share with our community? Just let me know in the comments below. Photograph your unique photos. Fired. Fired.